Yeah, g'day YouTubers. Tinker O'Toole again here with another video. Today we're just talking about um, doing maintenance on my MS-170. And I've done a few videos about the uh, spur sprocket or floating rim sprocket. Now, if we look in the top left-hand corner, the picture that I'm uh, displaying is from still saying that if you've got a uh, depth of a half a millimeter, change your spur sprocket. So this spur sprocket that I've got here, uh, we'll just have a look at the wear that you've got on that. We'll zoom in. Yeah, a little bit difficult to see. I'll just try again. Yeah, look, you can, you can, there's not much there. We'll just see whether you can see it. Uh, that's, that's better. Look, there wouldn't, there, there wouldn't even be half a millimetre wear on that. That's, that's quite serviceable. But I think that their quarter, uh, well, their half, half a millimetre wear is, uh, quite conservative. Uh, and if you're to look in the top, left hand corner this is an excessively worn uh spur sprocket so obviously you would never let it get that bad for me i'd let it get to about a millimeter then i'll sort of change it out now this is a six tooth sprocket this one will fit this is what i used to have on there and it's a seven seven there it is it's three eight seven tooth fits on there quite well now unfortunately if you were to look at the diameter of this spur sprocket it's 30 millimeters in width and if you multiply that by pi you'll get a length of 94.2 millimeters in length multiply that by 10,000 revs it'll be 942 meters uh, for every 10,000 rpm that it does per minute so that's under a kilometre, and if you put the floating rim sprocket on, that's 35 millimetres in length, and if you multiply that by pi, it comes to 109.9 uh, uh, millimetres in length. So almost 110 millimetres in length. Multiply that by 10,000, and you're almost at 1.1 uh, kilometres which is 15% faster. Problem is this saw doesn't have 15% reserve power, uh, torque and horsepower in it. So it's a really a waste of time sort of really doing that if you're using a 14 inch bar. Look, you can put a 16 inch bar on these. So if, you, if you've got a 16 inch bar on them, they come out with a 14. But if you put a 16 inch bar on it, yes, you can run that. But if you were to put this floating rim sprocket, which is 15% faster, this saw is going to bog down. So, the, look, just avoid putting a floating rim sprocket on an MS-170 or an MS-180. I did a bit of a uh, a uh, video on that on the larger saws. And the only time I would advise going up to a larger rim sprocket size... Most of the rim sprockets that come out are only seven pin on, on saws around 60 cc's and up. It's only when you get to the MS-880 that it has an eight pin floating sprocket. So the only time uh, on my MS-500i, uh, it's a seven pin floating rim sprocket. And the only time that I would go to an eight is if I was running a 20 inch bar. Because an MS-500i uh, can run a 30 inch bar, not a problem. So the advice is, while these are fantastic, uh, these are about $8, these floating rim sprockets. I'll get them uh, aftermarket, 8 bucks. These aftermarket, uh, I get these for about $36. I'd hate to buy one from still. They're probably about $70 or $80. Anyway, the other thing is, this saw is uh, 17 years old and I've never changed 
I've only had that on for about two years. I'm going back to this one because uh, it's much better torque uh, using the smaller rim sprocket than the larger one. Tends to bog down, not so much on smaller logs, but on logs six inches and, and above, it tends to bog down on that rather than that. So I'm going back to that. And if this wears out, I'll just pay the extra to get one of these in aftermarket. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.